I found a so way. So it's corporate America. I it's corrupt way, capitalism. I found a way to get around employment. I've, I've created the new machine for employment. This is exciting. It's brand you. new, and this is the best thing that I've offered, and it's really exciting. I have created a website that has a 50-mile zip code radius search, so that you can find what you're looking for by designating 4.2 miles from my zip code. I want to find somebody who repairs radiators or who tutors in quantum mechanics high school level or who is willing to be a part-time professor of physics at a college or high school. I mean, what I'm doing is I, I have the website. It's operational right now. And I want people to put in their tasks, rather than the fact that they want a job, forget it. Put in the tasks that you would like to perform for people for money. If you want to do the same tasks for free, I don't mind. I'm not there. This is for your college? It's for anything. It's, you, for, the it's for the world. It's for it's whatever for you would like to do in life. And you, you, if, you, if you view it like this, if you sit at the computer and you figure out what are the keywords I can use in order to invite people to find me. Here's the way it works. A person that has a garage that's looking for people to play in it would put, it, would put an ad on the same website saying, I have an empty garage at such and such a zip code. I'm looking for players that are willing to perform a repertory group, and, and please call me at such and such an address. So no matter what you want or what you have to offer, the website deals with it as a task or as a task wanted. There's no secret that it only takes words to try to express what you're looking for. And therefore, you could put in a thousand ads of, for different things that you would like to offer, different tasks or different things that you want, ideas that you're looking for, anything in the world that you want, you can express in words. Well, yeah, it's, so hap it's happening very well, the Craigslist well, and Free Craigslist Cycle. Well, Craigslist is not happening very well. Craigslist says that your ad comes out every 10 days. So if you ever thought about the effort that you put in in creating 1,000 ads, and then you would have to put those ads in every 10 days, you're not going to do it. So Craigslist is not adequate. Craigslist has a limitation that you can't put in an ad in every region. You have to select your region and stick with that. I don't. Craigslist requires that you pay money in many cases. I don't. So my ads are free. They last forever. There's a zip code radius search, and it is oriented towards the offering of tasks. I already yeah. know a task yeah. I want so to do, Frank. So you're building community yeah. Frank, through the Internet. Listen, i got a yeah. task in mind. I really want to videotape older people's stories for their children and their grandchildren. I'd like to do it in the city of New York. So I'm going to word something. I'm going to put it on your task list and see if I can do that. Yeah, here's, here's what I did with the mayor. I told the mayor that I told them that I want to have 40% of the eligible people in your town to be put on my website. Now that is a critical mass that I understand from the time of a video player, that, that the moment the market had 40% penetration, there would be more software and other benefits. It would be a critical mass that would allow the, an explosion of software for that equipment. So I'm saying that if I can get 40% of the people to list on my website, it's all free. They put in as many tasks as they want. But you need the infrastructure. I see. Okay. So my infrastructure for this website, this is the, pro this is the problem that I had. If I have 4,000 people in Hopeless that register, is that any different from having 4,000 people, one in each county of the United States? What's, what's the difference from a marketing standpoint? Okay. There's, let's say there's 2,000 counties. Two people in each county throughout the United States register in my website. Okay. Now, am I happy about that? No, you're no, not. No, why not? Because you need uh, Because I can't market community. them. I would have to buy a, a, a nationwide advertisement at a cost of a million dollars a minute. Uh -huh. But if I have 4,000 people within a one mile radius right. I can then advertise in a 25 mile radius around that town and I can bring in fifty thousand dollars of income per person on the average I think f by selling their tasks that town I calculated has one 
quarter of a billion dollars worth of unsold time every year that's going down the tubes just like a, 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 like a plane that leaves it's empty once the right. plane goes the seats are empty you lost that he has another brilliant idea Frank he's got uh, combined payroll so each little employer doesn't have to hire a bookkeeper in order to do the payroll tax is that part yeah, of the, the, the plan? fourth the fourth idea was to have a community payroll such as a uh, as, as an employer of record, a part-time, I'm sorry, an employment agency uh, for part-time people or office temp type. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the cost would be spread to the people, to the businesses that used it, so that each business then would have, they would check in with this employer of record and place em their own employees on there. And there would only be one insurance policy, one, one workman's comp policy, one uh, unemployment insurance policy, one audit, one set of files, and all of this would be done and eliminate so much added cost that the 800 businesses in the area would, would, would only have one little room servicing their payroll instead of having all of those 800 different operations that have frustrated people like myself in even hiring anyone. Like so if Frank done. wants yeah. to produce a play yeah. and he's got the, maybe he wrote this play, right? Mm -hmm. you're, this, yeah. you're the playwright. And he wants some actors. He advertises for actors. And then when he comes to paying them, he goes through the, uh, the collective right. payroll. Right. right. He and goes and in becomes... and, and checks in with them and gives them uh, the appropriate uh, access to your bank account. They have to write checks against your bank account. Can we just divvy yeah. up the box at the end of the night? Well, if you do, <laughs> you have uh, problems of, uh, of underground economy. And, and what I'm trying to do is to cause money legitimately to come into the town. Do, do you think a person can earn $100 a day doing odd jobs? I sure, imagine. they do it all they the time. They do it all the time. So I'm saying that between 100 and 200 dollars a day, my website can bring in. 100 dollars a day is 25,000 a year. 200 dollars a day is 50,000 a year. It's not outrageous to say that I think I can bring in 50,000 dollars of extra income per participant. Mm -hmm. So if you have that kind of money coming in. Where are their mortgages going to be? In default, or, or are they going to be paid? I, I see what you're saying, and yeah. by making an, an overground economy, right. what you're doing is, is you're building up the integrity of the government of the local area yeah. where people are uh, legally protecting each other. Well, they, or, so or have you gotten in touch with Mr. Well, Biden, Mr. Obama? Well, they, they should be doing this, not me. <laughs> this is what I object to. We have a whole to. new regime change. This, this is what I object to. Why do I have to go out and do this at my own expense? I'm not getting paid for this. I spend my time going to Indiana I, at my expense. I get no reimbursement for this. This is a government function that I'm doing because I know that it can work. And I'm well, the only one. Yeah, that's democracy. That's democratos. People I, power. You're, talking, I, I think you're it's a out, patriot. I think it's outrageous that we don't have a means by which the public can demand of their own local or other representatives Carl, to do this for but them. But Carl, they don't demand yeah. because we have poorly educated people. Yeah. Even after a quarter of a million dollars worth of education, yeah. my experience has been highly educated people can often be highly trained and highly conditioned people. They don't see some of the opportunities that somebody who isn't, uh, sometimes education is prejudice. You, you yeah, what was you that? Know, that, that you don't see that, the that opportunities. They're well, lazy, mind control. No, no but, 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 but I And don't want to do anything. They're, they're not given this tools, though. That, uh, they, these are the but, tools they need to be to be productive. We we have deprived them of the tools, and maybe as a matter of public policy, we have dumbed them down, and we don't give them the tools. I'm trying to change that. What if you were doing your passion? And what if the well, only I've thing? Well, twelve planes, and it takes a lot of money and passion and work. I know, but that, but what I'm so saying what? is, he's he's got this idea of an infrastructure using technology so that you connect with those actors who don't want to write the play, but they enjoy acting. Mm -hmm. You know, I I've, I've got six thousand hits for my apple pie recipe on YouTube. You know, people like to see. You know, give them some skills. I've I've learned a lot of little things. You know, to pass on, and I think home economy and social economy is the same thing personal health and social health, you know, it runs by similar principles. So what I've always liked about Carl is he never graduated from high school and he got through Harvard Law School.
I look at problems and I try to imagine what caused the problem because my feeling is that if you can understand what causes a problem, the solution is self-evident. Okay, so I, what, I, I, I think of problems and I try to what, see if I can understand them. What do you yeah. think caused the problem during 9-11? What got you interested in the 9-11 truth? Well, I Why did in, I see I you down at in, St. Mark's Church? I How came did that in happen? because my wife thought that the buildings were built improperly and, and should have been able to withstand the airplane hits if that's what occurred. And she went to various meetings and raised her voice and was angry with the way the buildings were constructed. And it didn't take too long to figure out that that wasn't it at all. It wasn't the way the buildings were constructed. Uh, it, it, it appeared. God bless Anne. <laughs> yeah, she went right down yeah, there, and yeah. and yeah, I love her. She's, yeah. she's a fighter. So she was fighting for the wrong thing, but it, it came clear after a while that uh, that how could these buildings go down without someone's assistance? <laughs> I really <laughs> admire the love you have for your wife, because he also filed a lawsuit, an amicus brief, on behalf of Howard Stern, not because he listened to Howard Stern, but because his wife did, and and he was with his wife, so he was listening too, and it's a very yeah. interesting lawsuit. I learned, I, I had a lot more respect yeah. for Howard Stern after I heard that. Yeah. But anyway, so, so, so Anne is down there and she's pestering that the buildings were built improperly because right. buildings should be able to withstand right. airplanes if and that's then, what And then happened. she realized, it, it dawned on us that that wasn't it at all. And we, we came into the 9-11 movement because it, we realized that it wasn't... 9-11 Truth Movement. 9-11 Truth Movement, yes. 9-11 Truth, movement, yes. 9 truth, well, 9 11 truth movement, yes. Go on. Yeah. Well, and then we went to the church and we met everyone here and elsewhere we met a lot of people and the idea on the phone for a commission uh, I was on a phone a national telephone conference with about 20 or 30 people in the 9-11 truth movement nationally and a person in the state of Washington mentioned that there was a petition process in New York that we should think about and I said I didn't know about it what is it he said you can pass statutes by vote of the people I said I didn't know that tell me more so I looked up the law and I found a New York City ballot initiative statute and I then said great let's have a ballot initiative to have a commission to investigate 9-11 mm -hmm. and and to grant it the subpoena power because it would be like a, a, any government agency the SEC and other agencies have subpoena power you can give them a subpoena power so then I saw a, several about a month or two later that the the real initiative statute in New York is based on a New York State constitutional provision that guarantees the right of home rule including the right of residents voters in the area to change the law that their legislators change the law yeah you can change the law by vote of the people so why don't, we, uh, why don't they have a ballot initiative to, to decriminalize marijuana? Well, because Let's it's, a federal, it's a federal matter. You can't have, uh, there are restrictions that you can't violate. With, the, with your initiative, you can't overcome state law to the contrary or federal law to the contrary. Oh, okay. That's the reason for it. But 9 so, so, But if you have room to maneuver at the city level, such as congestion pricing, yeah. we could either have congestion pricing or we could outlaw congestion pricing. So the, the ballot initiative for 9-11, New York City has a right to investigate 9-11. So you have a right to pass a statute by vote of the people taking away the right to investigate possibly but at least you could create the right to investigate it it's not inconsistent with new york state law to have new york city investigate a disaster or planned disaster that took place here so let's so, not so that this whole yeah, situation yeah. two years ago you had the wonderful yeah, initiative yeah. we tried to get it going yeah. then mr it's, pepper it's stepped not, in and said oh you not, shouldn't be attorney general it, it, on there's this not enough so time psh, there's we went not, to a new not one enough time now you, a new 9 11. You, you, they have thirty thousand signatures doing, why wasn't that presented what, what, at the city what, council what you're doing is presenting a book and asking in 10 seconds if i can answer your book that isn't fair it takes a, it takes 15 or 20 minutes to go over the whole history here but I created this thing. I wrote the petition. The petition included, when we modified it, it included Pepper. And Pepper agreed with me to that he would be willing to have me on there still. That he came into it after I wrote it and after I put myself in as Attorney General. He came in after. He was an afterthought and he came in and he appointed a group of his own people to the petition and then said after the petition was there and you got signatures for it, he presented an ultimatum saying that unless 
the attorney general comes out of it, he's leaving. So at that moment, he took off with the petition, cut me out of it, and ran on his own. And then Keep it the didn't work. It, it has sort of sl slowed down, and it's not on the ballot Keep with our initial petition, but devoid of any names, because it appears that when you put names on a petition, they can hold you up. So we're not going to have names on it who can then hold you up and say that unless you do so and so, we're going to walk. Well, I don't why, understand. Why, why is this uh, 30,000 signatures we gathered with Ed Asner as commissioner and Dr. Pepper and all these other people? Ask them. What's the problem? Ask why can't them. we dump that on the city council's well, desk? Ask, take, well, ask them. Take the ball and roll that, with that's it. That's not my petition. Ask them. Why didn't they do that? And the answer to it, I think, is this, that the New York City Council knows that it can have a petition, that it can have a commission to investigate 9-11 any time that it wants. And it has decided by not doing it, not to do it. So you're going to now walk up there and say, hey, guess what, you can do this. And they laugh and say, we know we can do it, and we've decided not to. We just never publicize the fact that we're not going to do it. If you well, want if the will of the people demands it, if we get 3,000, 3, 30,000, 300,000 signatures saying, we want a proper investigation here, why the, the government has but, to but, answer but, to the will of the people, but, but your, your supposedly. Will, but, but your will of the people, when you say that you have three or five or 10,000 people, how many people live in New York? Uh, 14 million okay, or so. Okay, now where is your will of the people in the puny amount of votes that you have assembled? A lot of people said, yeah, yeah, I agree, but it's like, oh, give me a break. But, but I don't want to what you're, sign this what document doing, three times. It was like, give me a, give me a headache. You, you, you're Make not, it simple. You're if it could not, be very simple, it probably would have 10,000 more signatures. That, that, you know, the, the, you, in order to tell the people in a petition what you plan to do, you have to tell them. If you want to say that this is a petition and we're not going to tell you what it's about, it's a simple one, please sign it. I'm sure you'll get the signatures. But what are you going to have when you don't say anything? So you're saying give them a blank slate and don't say anything, let them sign it. They will sign it. They will sign a blank slate. You know that. And but I know it. They don't read it. Just summarize it in three, qu three no, simple you need sentences. To, you need to spell we it out. We don't believe the official story. We want a new investigation. But that, that all you're doing is, yeah, that's a different kind of petition. You're going up to legislators and saying that we have a problem, that we don't believe the story, and we want you to investigate, and they do nothing. That That's a different type of petition. You have a right to do that. Freedom of speech, you can do it any time you want. Freedom of the right to petition the government for a redress of, the, of grievances. We have a different type of petition. It's a statute. We're trying to pass a statute, and the statute is longer than just that we want help. It's much longer than that, and it happens to take three or four pages to spell out. Your people, the ones that you helped, you've helped it at the my side, and then you helped the new side, the Pepper Group, and neither one has accomplished it. The first one got stopped by the Pepper Group. Pepper's group is now stopped. Apparently, it isn't going anywhere, and we're back now with phase three. Does so, anyone know yeah. the reason why that's? Why I told you. I told you they the reason. They didn't present the material. No, the reason is that they didn't get the number of signatures by in time to be on the ballot. Well, uh, some of those signatures were not valid. But what did you do with the signatures? Did you give them to, to the elections board of elections? I well, exactly. That's what I would hope. I said, let's put put this on their desk and let them deal but, with it. But good, better, and different. It's a pile of of people that are saying we want an investigation. Do you know if that was done? Because I know no, somebody. No, it wasn't. That's what's sitting yeah. in some house somewhere. Okay, somebody called me up and and asked me what if we give these petitions over to the board of elections, will they ever get them back? I said, I don't think so. Then what do you do? I mean, if you hand over, but you have to, you have I, to I, hand over this. This, this is this, I understand. Yeah. Now, what was yeah. your strategy? Why is Office of City Attorney General so important? Because to oh, me, it's an could, ongoing. Could, okay, here the New York City Attorney General can turn around the budget problem for one thing. How about that? Right. Just just that alone, the New York City Attorney General can go after the people that owe money to New York City, collect five billion a year, and put us back on track. The problem politically is that the people who owe money to New York City are not the ones that the... I know about all of this corruption, but I want to kind of point out some of the brilliance that Carl had here using 9-11. 9-11 was not really an end in itself. It was just a glaring example of a travesty done against an unprotected people that no one was prosecuting for their right not to be, you know, bombed or whatever it was that happened.
Yeah, you know, God bless three and three you know, firemen zapped, and 2,000 neighbors. Zapped. In, a, in, a, in 11 seconds, a building becomes talcum powder. Nobody even understands the technology that, that did that. So he well, was saying... it's top secret weaponry. Was, so what? Well, it's top secret weaponry. The important thing is it's to get chaining these people that it's did it behind bars. No, it's inaccessible to us because we don't have the resources to investigate it. And what he was saying is if you had an office of the city attorney general, you would have the resources of the government to prosecute for the rights of the people well, I disagree to breathe with that. William and Garrison not live didn't have the money terror. to back to look into the Kennedy assassination, but he and 10,000 other patriots investigated no, Kennedy assassination. Just, and all of America I'm has just, woken up to investigating 9 11. No, but, but no, and no, 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 no. Resources. no, no, no. It's listen, evidence. It's listen, clear that this was an inside listen, job. Listen, listen, a crime happened. Power? Where's your subpoena? A crime power? happened on 9 11, and but these criminals you, must be brought to task. But Frank, they murdered Frank, our friends. Frank, I totally agree. With all that, I totally agree. I so it's not about not having I resources or money. I ceaselessly study this. What I'm trying to tell you is, we don't want to go from one crime and travesty to another. You know, Kennedy and the moon. You know, it goes, it goes on and on. Can't you have a consistent life where you are living under a constitution with a certain amount of order, so that you have the security that you can start to grow, to prosper, to share your love, to start to include everyone. That's what it's about to me. That's why the Office of City Attorney General, once I understood it, I go, wow, this is amazing. This, this could address the Chinese now owning our mortgages. They can call in whenever they want and just own the country because it's, it's been hemorrhaged away, because we didn't have government institutions that were watching. What happened to the Federal Trade Commission when the Walmarts were coming in? It wasn't just a matter of people not being able to pay their mortgages. Why in a time of advanced technology and greater power are people so desperately poor and so anxious and so stressed out? Why were 2,000 jobs lost on Election Day? People got pink slips. You know, where are they going to go? I mean, we've, we've got viewers now that are watching this. They want something practical that they can hold. And that's why I was so excited about the Office of City Attorney General using 9-11 as something constructive to make people's lives better. Understand this trauma and rise above this trauma. And you'd go about it in a methodical way. That's how I thought yeah. of it. That w I tacked it on because it would raise the money we needed for 9-11 investigation and it would raise that money by enforcing the rights of people in the city and make life better. Now in the small town I'm telling them that I can raise enough money as a town attorney general to give you enough money to provide for health care uh, for everyone and, in the and, town. And if there's an office yeah. of city attorney general then Frank then you go and you say what happened to the 30,000 signatures? You don't have any place to go now. You're frustrated. You put a lot of time in. You don't know why these signatures didn't end up where you thought they would. If you had an office of city attorney general then you stay on it. He has to prioritize, right? He has 10,000 problems that the people have. So if only a few people are interested in 9-11 he's not going to study it. But if it's true that there's interest, that there's passion, that there's a concern, then he sees it. it comes to his office, and that's his job. His job is to prosecute for the rights of the people. And it's not that's criminal prosecution, it's civil. It's not civil. Yeah, it's civil. Yeah, yeah. It's enforcing the rights of people. It's not a criminal function. Yeah, you know, it, you know yeah. what I mean, Frank? When, when you make a crime, that's when you get a lawyer and you're poor. That's when you get the lawyer because he's defending you because you committed a crime. Where's the lawyer that's helping you when you haven't committed a crime, but a crime's been committed against you? from the corporations, from whoever rained down that terror on 9-11. Who does that? That's how I understand yeah. it. It's to enforce your rights rather than your duties, and it's in, it's in opposition to a prosecutor. A prosecutor could be well sued for being too aggressive and, and taking away your rights. So it's a, it's a natural enemy. The prosecutor and a, and, a, and a town attorney general are at different ends on the balancing of, of the interests yeah. of government and the people. It's, it's, it's glaringly yeah. absent now. Yeah. And here's, here's another way of looking at it. I'm realizing now that there are doctors that have cured themselves of cancer or their close ones using very natural remedies or, or remedies that don't hurt. They're not harmful. Or cost money and, or and profit some of them, the pharmaceutical right. And some of, them, some of them cannot in good conscience uh, 
adhere to the requirements of the American Medical Association and give out the really cruel therapies that have excruciating death usually. They won't do it. And in order to not do it, they have to choose another profession. Who is prosecuting for them? Who's prosecuting on their behalf? And because of that, untold suffering is happening. That, that's, that's a terrorism that, that's going on every single day. Yeah, remember when, Dr. We, when people Rebecca get their biopsy. Conley, she, she helped cure Gulf War vets and denounced vaccines and uh, other alternative healing modalities, and she had to give up her, her, her medical license. Here yeah, she was a surgeon, I know, a doctor. But I'm saying I don't want to be out of my mind with anger and frustration and running around from one cause to another. I want to focus on clarifying where I can uh, put my energy so that there's consistency in my life and I can start to build up on the joy that I know exists. Well, watch the sunrise, go meditate, have your own <laughs> ashram. But what Peace I, begins within, you know, clarity and balance is within. We all have a connection to God. So what Whether I, or not we have lots of possessions or properties, no, but, you know, but confusion. Office, yeah. But okay. Office of City Attorney General is part of that. It's part of the regime, part of the program. It's like getting up early. It's like he's saying you have a prosecutor. Where is the natural enemy of the prosecutor? If he's always saying, what have you done wrong? Who's saying, you know, let's make sure that that you can prosper and do right, that, that you're protected to prosper and do right. Who's doing but, that? But here, here's the essential thing that I determined, that at the top you can't do change. No matter what we hear, you can't effect the change. Do you think that Obama is going to bring $50,000 of added income into people? No, I don't. No way. But and you I don't can. think that either, do you, Frank? I can. I can well, bring I, if Obama $50, was like Cynthia McKinney, yeah, who I right, voted for, right. and really wanted a radical change, radical change can happen because we have radical problems. But, but, and there could be a president with great visionary but, but, but imagine who's a this spiritual now. oriented person. But imagine this. I can take a small town, uh, just a very small town, 10, 15, 20,000 people, and I can bring prosperity into the town. I'm doing it to test it, to, to make a model. And if that works, you're going to have okay, an expansion. Okay, what's the website? Where do we go? Well, it's myclads.com. But, but that, well, myclads.com. It means myclassifiedadvertisements.com. Myclads.com. M-Y-C-L-A-D-S.com. But the better website, the one that covers everything, all four, is called electionissuesus.com. ElectionIssuesUS.com. With two dashes, not underscore, but two dashes. ElectionIssuesUS.com. That's a domain name that I put up recently, and that has my four main things, and it even refers to uh, Hopeless Indiana. I, I made okay, a change. Okay, so we can yeah. stay so again, in touch yeah. with that. What are the four main things? The four main things are website to bring in twenty-five to fifty thousand dollars per year per person that wants to work. Number two, an employer of records so that all small businesses and the households that want to hire domestics can check into one place. Thirdly, a town attorney general. And fourth, the star of the whole thing is the free college. Tuition free yeah, university. Yeah. Well, God so bless you, Carl. Hopefully that will work out. And it sounds I'm like sure. There you have it. Thank you for joining me. My name is Paula Gloria, and this has been an excursion farther down the rabbit hole with some of my favorite guests, Frank Craven, whose show is What's Ailing Healing America, on every Friday at uh, 9.30 to 10, Channel 34. Channel 34, and Carl Pearson, who's got these brilliant ideas that the country can lift up by its own bootstraps. Thank you for joining me. Thanks. Thank you.